Hello, and welcome to episode 10 of Maths in an Empty Classroom with me, Mr. Sun. Today we'll be looking at further kinematics and the use of vectors. Now, if you're watching this video, you should be familiar with the use of calculus for non-constant acceleration. If that's something that you're unclear about, you need to go back, you need to do it that's not in vector form before you attempt what's going on in this video. So, what we know about non-constant acceleration so far is uh, we know that velocity is the rate of change of displacement. And therefore, if you have an expression for displacement, you can differentiate to get the velocity. Similarly, the definition of acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration, dv dt. By that same logic, working backwards, if you know acceleration and you want to find an expression for velocity, you can integrate. Similarly, if you have an expression for velocity and you want the displacement or the position, uh, then you can integrate. Uh, so we're going to move on at a decent pace and we're just going to look at an example um, of how to apply this in vector form. Uh, so this is example one. Uh, a particle is moving in a plane uh, at time t seconds, its velocity is v meters per second. Uh, it's given by v equals 3ti uh, plus a half t squared j. And what you'll notice is we've got separate i and j components because we're now dealing in vectors, whereas the ones you've seen previously might just have been in terms of t. Uh, we're told that when t equals zero, the position vector of p with respect to a fixed origin, i.e. where it is, is 2i minus 3j. Uh, and we're asked to find the position vector of p at time t seconds and the acceleration of p uh, when t equals three. So, uh, I'm gonna do this on here. Uh, so that we can see the equations. So let's uh, begin with part A. Uh, we are given that the velocity uh, is 3t i uh, plus a half t squared j. Uh, and we're asked to find the position vector of p. Now, if we have velocity and we want to find position, uh, we need to integrate uh, velocity. So we're looking for the position, which we tend to call x, is the integral of, um, that's a mistake, uh, is the integral of velocity uh, with respect to t. You should be familiar with that. In vector form, we can integrate the i components and the j component separately. We just have to be a little bit careful when we're doing that. So, when we integrate the i component, 3t, we get 3 over 2t squared plus c, a constant. But I'm actually going to write c1 for reasons that will become clear in a minute. And that is the i component. I'm then going to integrate the j component, giving me one sixth t cubed plus c two j. And what hopefully is becoming clear now is that because we have two things, an i component and a j component that we've integrated separately, the constant of integration for i isn't necessarily the same as the constant of integration for j. Uh, so what we now need to do is to move forward to find out what these constants are um, because that will give us an expression for the position vector um, of p at time t seconds. Uh, so I'm just going to go on to a new um, page for this. Uh, so we had that x uh, equaled 3 over 2 t squared plus c1 i and uh, that was plus one sixth t cubed plus c2 j. Uh, and we're told in the question uh, that when t equals zero, uh, the position vector of p, which, which I'm um, calling x, um, was 2i minus 3j. Uh, so when t equals 0, x equals 2i 
minus 3. Check. Uh, so if I sub in t is 0 uh, to this first bit here, um, if t is 0, um, then I would get x equals, well, nothing from that, so just c1, j. And again, if t is 0, 1 sixth t cubed is 0, so plus c2, j. Um, and I know that that is equal to 2i minus 3j. Uh, and that tells me that c1 equals 2, uh, and that c2 equals negative 3. So my expression for my position vector at time t is what I got when I integrated with my constants of integration in there. Uh, so the i component, I have 3 over 2 t squared plus 2 i plus 1 sixth t cubed minus 3 j. And if I was to be given a different value of t, I could use that value of t, substitute it into this, and that would tell me the position of where the particle was at that given time. Right. Moving on to part B then. Uh, part B is asking for the acceleration of P uh, when T equals 3. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, original um, expression for velocity, uh, which was that V equals 3T I uh, plus a half T squared J. Generally you tend to put brackets around a bit of the T's then. Now acceleration uh, is the rate of change of velocity. So we differentiate V with respect to time. And again we can do it separately for the I components and the J components. Uh, so what we would have here, if we differentiate the I component we're just going to get 3. And if we differentiate the J component we're just going to get T. So that is an expression for my acceleration at time t. Uh, and I was asked for the acceleration when t equals 3. Yes, I was. Therefore, um, all I need to do uh, is to sub in t equals 3 uh, and get that a equals 3i uh, plus 3j. and it's a negative 2. Um, that's in vector form, which is fine, because that's what I was asked for. I was asked for acceleration. Acceleration is a vector quantity. Uh, if I'd been asked for the magnitude of the acceleration, I'd have to go through, crack out Pythagoras and get it as a number. Uh, if I was asked for the uh, direction of the acceleration, um, I'd have to crack out some trig and work out the angle. But all I've been asked for is the acceleration. Um, so at this stage, um, that is done. So key points, whether you're integrating or differentiating with a vector expression, you treat the i component and the j component separately. You must remember that when you're integrating, you're going to get a constant of integration for i, a constant of integration for j, which aren't going to be the same as each other necessarily. Job done.